everybody. Here is a quick unboxing of the uh, CyberGeek Nano J1 Mini PC. It's a Celeron N509A, and this is the same family as the uh, N5105 that are in these Melophon boxes over here. Some of the advertisements online say these beat the N5105. So I Anyway, we'll test that. We'll compare it to the uh, N5105 that's in the very, very similar Melophon. It's just a, a commodity, kind of a commodity case. We'll see later that it's the same case, just with different branding on it. There's the computer. Let's take a peek at the quick start guide because that's been interesting recently. Wi-Fi, yeah, it says it has 2.5 gigabit networking. Good. Nothing else here terribly interesting. Let's look inside of the box. We have here. Get out of there. Now we can now we can see it. And let's just do a comparison to the, the Melophon units. Like I said, same. I've attached the base amounts of these, but you can see same commodity case on each of these. These do have a label on the back saying what they are and where they were made. I'm going to take a look inside too to just do a side by side comparison of the internals of each of these. Turn it around like that. But they're looking like exactly the same unit. Let's take them apart and see what's inside. But first, back to the box. I guess we should finish that up, right? Seems like the same packing as previous videos. Looks like the same kind of power supply, and that's that. Let's see if we've got anything under here. Oh yeah, something's in here. I'm gonna guess the same kind of, yeah. Not the same kind of base amount, a little bit different, but nevertheless, some mounting hardware. So that's what's in the box. So once again, I'm going in to uh, destroy the feet on these, like this. Now I'll remove the backs and then I'll, we'll do a comparison side by side. Okay, I got them apart here. And what we can see are two very different creatures. Here we have SSD. This was, the Melophon X7 was a SATA only, so what we seem to have over here is a PCIe drive. Let's see if we can see what that is. It's a Kingston. It's 128 gigabytes. And I can't quite make out the numbers there. But it's definitely, you know, on the inexpensive side of PCIe drives. It has a Fison controller. That That's kind of interesting. And we have... Looks like dual channel memory. Two four gigabyte. Uh, again, I can't read all the information, but maybe we can get it on the screen there. I'll try to grab some close ups of both of those things as well. And it looks just like commodity RAM PC4 3200. So the performance of these should be. Really a lot better, even though the, the chips are equivalent. Uh, we should have dual channel memory, so that's kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and, and what else is going on in here? Nothing, nothing terribly exciting. They both, it's interesting, they both have, seem to have, you know, of course, the exact same layout and kind of same components out here because they're both using the commodity case. You can see that one of, this is something that came up last time, one of the two Melophons I bought came with an internal SATA connector that connects right there on the board. I don't see any sign of a place to connect a another SATA drive. One more tiny thing I noticed here. I, I referred to the SATA connector on the Melophon before that plugs into that header right there. And this board seemed, the board on the CyberGeek seems to have the same design, but it's not even soldered in there. So no, you're not going to add a, a SATA SSD to the CyberGeek like you are with, you know, maybe some of the Melophons, 
that actually do come with the SATA connector cable, which at least one, this other one over here that I bought did not come with. So that's the world of low end computers, I'm afraid. Quick thing here before I pull these out, I did remember that many of people like to see what the cards are. They're both Intel cards and I'll, uh, I'll put the model number up. So both the Cyber Geek and the Melophon seem to be using the same heat sink and fan. Uh, they seem to have the same ITE controller chip there for I.O. And other than that, there's really not a lot to talk about down here. Okay, just a quick look around here. We care a little bit about what the Ethernet controller is. So we have a a Realtek RTL 8125 2. gigabit per second controller. I did look up the SSD, and I'm going to put a little information on the screen about it, but it's not it's not much of an SSD, and none of the, the listings have any information about what speed they're promising it delivers. So I found a new egg. I think I'll, I'll show show some of that, but I couldn't really find any information about what they're promising. Let's go ahead and run Crystal Dismark or K Dismark and see what we get. Okay, so needless to say, uh, our best score is almost, you know, 800 megabytes per second on sequential read with a Q depth of uh, eight. That's, you know, this is in this one category, it's better than a SATA drive. This looks awfully much like, and I'm fairly sure it's the case, that although this is an NVMe drive, so it's PCIe, it's also one lane. Because of, you know, the SATA drive shouldn't do this well. But if you look at all of the rest of the numbers, the sequential write at different Q depths, and then the you know, the random 4K is fine. You know, that, that's what we would expect for Q depth one, one thread for a typical NVMe drive. But all the rest of these numbers are really very much like you would get with a SATA drive. So there's nothing terribly exciting there. So one of the things I do like to try to understand about these mini PCs is how well do they turbo? There's a Let's see, let's do a LSCPU. What are we supposed to have here? We have, as we can see, uh, Intel Celeron N095A, two gigahertz is what it's advertised to operate at. Its maximum gigahertz is 29, so it'll turbo, turbo all the way up to 29 for a short period of time. The question then is, you know, turboing, how much headroom is in there? So based on the cooling of the chip, it should continue to turbo up to somewhere between 2000, which is its base clock or its maximum base clock, its maximum advertised speed and its turbo speed. One of the ways that we could do that would be to do the i7Z program, which I've already installed. And I've tried this already. So, okay, there we go. It's trying to start up and then it quits. Now, why i7Z is not happy with this particular Intel chip, I don't know. So we'll do something slightly different. First of all, let's go ahead and stress whoops, four cores. It's a four core computer. So let's stress all four cores. And let's cat, let's proc CPU info. And that file has like lots of information in it, right? You know, tremendous amount of data comes out of that. I don't know why I can't, I don't know why it won't scroll up there. Okay. But if I do something like, that command, 
and pipe that to grep and look for megahertz. It should give us all the lines out of that file uh, telling us what speed it's running at. So we see at this moment that we did that command, two cores were running at 2000 uh, or two gigahertz and the other two cores were taking a little break. I run it again and run it again. And we can see variously that, you know, sometimes a, one of the, the cores is boosting up to 2000, two gigahertz, 2000 uh, megahertz, two, two gigahertz, or most of the time it's running around its idling speed of around 800. So let's go ahead and stress it. And I can hear the fan come on and let's take a look at where it's sitting now. So yeah, it boosts pretty well. If it's maximum turbo is up to 2.9 gigahertz, we can see, okay, uh, we're getting 28 there. Now it'll heat up a little bit. So maybe those will fall, but let's give that a little bit of time and, and let it soak the heat a little bit. And let's see if we're getting below 2.8 gigahertz on that in a little bit. So we'll speed through this. Okay, let's take a look at it now, and that's impressive. So you'll, from, in some of my other videos, just to give you some sense of this, the B-Link EQ12 Pro with eight cores, which is advertised to be a 3.6 gigahertz chip, when you pound all eight cores with stress, it really slowed down to around 2.3, 2.4 gigahertz. The Melophon X7s that I was looking at they were able to come out, come in at around 2.7 on the N5015 CPU. So the, you know, this is staying really close to its maximum advertised boost. Is a really positive thing about this machine. It will, it, you can you can hammer all four cores and they'll stay pretty close to the maximum speed that this thing can run at anyway. It, it turbos very well. So the takeaway on this machine is. You know, it's a it's a mini PC at $105, which is what I got this one for. I like it. It's fine. All right, everybody. Thanks. Okay, big apologies here. I almost forgot. Peeled.